Minecrafters and how you going? Steve-O here with another video and uh, I've just got back uh, home. I've been really busy today but I've been really excited to be able to try Sethling's Redstone Map Challenge. Those of you who remember I finished the last one uh, with a little bit of difficulty. It wasn't too bad. It was more timing of um, pistons and such that uh, that delayed me and I'm hoping to get a pretty good run this time. Alright, so I'm going to do a bit of a voiceover just because of uh, how, well, this took actually quite a bit of footage and rather than just give you guys some um, music to listen to, which I'll have it on there as well, um, I wanted to maybe put in a bit of audio as well just so it doesn't get boring. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed this challenge. Um, I thought it was really interesting. I love how he in incorporated command blocks. This one here actually had me interested for a bit because um, the clear command wouldn't work straight away. And um, I was trying to figure out what was what the go there was, and I thought, well, there has to be something to do with this dirt block. And so, um, you know, I tried a few things, and and that there, I, I thought I saw a pulse. So, I uh, that's why I broke the dirt there, for example, and and did it again. So and did it here. I was like, oh, okay, that worked. So, because at first I was like, oh, okay, this is broken. This got to be something wrong with the command block. But then. And then I kind of came to my sense, I was like, well, it's not like it's some novice making it, it was made by Seth Bling, so it should be right. So, yeah, I did it um, with the dirt block. Now, this one here was just a simple matter of counting uh, how far it was and then doing a few negative uh, minuses. There I kind of miscounted, <laughs> didn't think about the um, a few other factors that were, um, that I didn't, yeah, didn't think, think yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Now this one here, I, th I thought was fairly simple. I thought, oh yeah, just add a simple clock. And then I remembered that at that range that um, repeaters don't like to take on the uh, the pulses, so I extended the clock. This one here, um, I had to be really careful because I only had eight diamonds, so I did a bit of planning first, realized, tried to figure out which one, or which direction the items were going to go. So which hopper, for example, would be the first one. And then I chucked in the item, and you, I could see, because all the things were pulled, uh, which one was the first one. So then I wanted to move it into the corner piece, which is what I do here, and then just move it one, one at a time um, all the way around the thing. I didn't want to lose any because I realized that there was no replacement diamonds. If I lost any diamonds, there was no way of getting them back, so I had to be really careful. Um, but even still, I managed to do it pretty good. This one here, um, I don't know what I was thinking at first, where I'd, I tried to uh, extend as here, uh, just a piece of redstone along the front. I kind of wanted to measure, I think. I think that was going through, what, that's what was going through my head, just uh, measure how far it was to see if I could, um, I don't know, figure out how many of those I'd have to do. Uh, I really don't remember what was going through my head, but uh, it, it wasn't an overly difficult puzzle, it just, <laughs> yeah, just uh, all about speed and uh, being able to place blocks in a very quick uh, place of time. Uh, it, yeah, very quick placement. Um, I can't speak tonight. I'm so tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. Now this one here, um, I didn't count it, I'm going to be honest. I was like, I'd had a long day and I was like, whatever, I'll just kind of um, wing this one. So I didn't count any of the the comparators, as you can see, I just kind of went through, powered a few things, saw what it did, powered a few more things and then compared and then just kind of did trial and error. Um, not one of my final ones, but I, I mean it worked in the end. Had I done this again, I would have probably done a lot faster and counted uh, how much was being minused each time, because it, the first time you basically step on it, it sends a, a massive long pulse right to the end, and then the ones that come after that mo uh, take away from whatever was on there previously, because it's um, using comparators, and they've, they've got the uh, the minus functions. So it, it takes away from what was originally there, and um, and so yeah, that's how I figured this one out eventually, because I was like, okay, well I need to figure out which one of these um, will take away the right amount from the end result. So yeah, <laughs> this one actually probably took me the longest, I, I think, or oh, second longest. It was one of the longer ones, because yeah, I didn't really think about it. I'd, wish I had thought about it a little bit more. It, I mean, I did figure it out, and it wasn't a reasonable time, but I, I could have done it so much quicker. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think that that was it? No. I, I don't remember... Um, 
I remember what was going through my head at the time. But, yeah, I, I think um, I actually really liked this one because it was... Um, it made you... Well, obviously, it would have made me think it. I'd done it right, but having gone back and looked at everything, because I looked at, looked at everything afterwards just to appreciate what Seth had put in uh, everything... Or everything that Seth had put down sort of thing. Because um, when I first went through, I was just like, yeah, whatever, just solve it, keep going. But I actually really liked this one. It was just um, simple, but like if it was one redstone too strong, it it would not work. And if it was one too weak, it wouldn't work. So it had to be right on par with what the thing was, which is what made it so successful. And it made you have to think because, you I mean, you could minus, and there was a few options to minus, but you had to calculate it. And uh, and that made it a little bit more interesting, I think. So and now this one here, um, I originally did it, and like I guess I enchanted the items, but I thought I had enchanted uh, speed two potions. So I, I go through here, you know, I make the potions, everything like that, and then I try to to run on the thing, and then I realised it wasn't working. So I was like, what's going on here? looked at the potion, and <laughs> lo and behold, it was a, a, a speed uh, 2 potion, speed 1 potion instead of speed 2. I mean, that was just a simple thing of adding more glowstone, but, um, yeah, it helped, it really set me back a little bit. At this point here, I still haven't figured it out, but in just a moment, I will. Now, the hopper, so, sorry, the uh, uh, <laughs> brewing stand thing wasn't overly difficult to figure out. Just kind of figure out the the top one would, um, yeah. See here, I'm using uh, swiftness one. The top one gives you the the items that you're refining with. Say like for example, nether wart or uh, sugar or whatever else you're you're making. In this case, it would have been sugar and glowstone and and nether wart. But so, and here I I kind of figure out. Hang on, there's something wrong with my speed and. And that's why I got the glowstone dust there, for example. And so I decided, yep, swiftness too. I made a couple of potions because I thought, well, uh, why not? <laughs> just in case. Because the first time I ran through it, I thought, well, just in case I uh, somehow get the timing wrong, I'll make two. I'll make three. And here I have swiftness too. And it's all cinch after that. Just got to get it right on the timing. Because I kept going right past the pressure plate, which was annoying. Because, I mean, it wasn't hard after that. You just had to get the timing right. Because the problem is you needed to send a one tick pulse, and the only way to do that is to stand on, to like walk over the plate, not stand on the plate. And a few times they're actually stood on the plate, which was stupid. Now this one here, um, I I thought it was quite in interesting. It's like a, a shift register sort of thing. You basically had to try and um, send the right uh, code through. So it was um, in this case I had to start from the very beginning and feed it bits through. Um, one at a time. Now it took me a little bit. It took me a second or two to figure that out. Um, I saw obviously what had to be off and what had to be on, but um, yeah, essentially just a a, a little bit of a, a slightly modified shift register um, using the repeater locks. And I actually it looks looks pretty similar to a shift register I made a very long time ago in like the early snapshots when uh, when those repeater locks first came out. So I was a bit accustomed to how they worked and such. Now this piston one was um, actually a bit of fun. I, I mean I figured it out pretty quick but I do like playing with pistons and uh, making um, blocks swap around it and um, the way that the blocks, like wh the way that you do the one tick pulse and then push remind me of a double piston extender a little bit. <laughs> uh, my, uh, what was it, that one I made, um, what was it? <laughs> my hipster door thing, that's the one. Because <laughs> I did something similar to that in some of the the redstone. Obviously I had to, in order to move bits up, but um, I had a, a few elements that were similar to that, and so it reminded me of that a little bit. It's funny how you, like, it looks nothing like it, but to me it, it reminded me heaps of it. And there we go. Uh, this one here was much the same, I just had to move the block from one end to the other. Um, <laughs> not crazy really, just, uh, just alternate between them, one tick pulses, and, yeah, it was pretty simple after that. <laughs> this one here, um, 
it took me a second because I was trying to figure out. I I thought, well, I can just send one tick pulses through and it should do it. Um, that was a little bit silly, I think. And so I thought, well, I'll just make a little clock. But then the things alternate. Whenever you're stepping on it, the thing shuts. So that was a problem. And so I decided to make a uh, a rapid pulser. Now this time around, I made it a little bit too far away. I was just like wanted to see if it would work. I don't know why I made it so far away. I call it. F I, I blame fatigue. <laughs> and then this time I got it right. Had to keep breaking it because to keep the uh, the torch going. Um, but otherwise, it worked all right for my needs. You know, four pulses each time I before I broke any more redstone. Um, so that was you know fairly good. Um, yeah, I think that was it to this puzzle. Just had to basically um, over well, fill up the other hopper. Now this puzzle was a bit of a challenge for me. Um, I mean, obviously turning off the bit with the torches was fairly simple, but um, turning off the the bit where it was hidden, uh, I didn't. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was. I thought it had to be some kind of um, pattern or something. I was looking for a pattern somewhere, and so I had. I kept looking back at my um, my other one and f and trying to figure out what the pattern might be. So I put one on each of them and uh, luckily for me I, I was night time when I tried the middle three. I don't know if I have the footage still on here but I'd had to delete some of my footage because Fraps kept um, crashing and, and a lot of the uh, the th segments were like you know a minute or half a minute or something and it looked sloppy because every time Fraps would crash my screen would freeze until I clicked back on my screen sort of thing and then my mouse would be facing somewhere else so every minute or so you would see me just suddenly look off into the space or be like half a step away if I was, I was walking or something like that and it, it just looked completely unprofessional so I ended up deleting a, a portion coming up. I mean, just back there. I don't know if you noticed it, um, but within that portion, I was actually lighting it all up, seeing if anything would glow um, a, around the entrance, which three of them did. Like these ones, uh, I walked away from it. The three around um, around the middle. So I concluded they must be repeaters, um, because when I pulled the levers, they are uh, they became they glowed. So see like that. That's it. I, I didn't delete the footage. Okay, cool. So you you could see um, that they they glowed when the the thing was on. So I, th I thought, well, they must be repeaters. Now here, um, I had to actually go do something. So I, I pressed I instead of escape. I do it a lot um, in my redstone for my redstone because I don't know because um, I'm usually waiting for something to wh whether I'm doing an animal farm or something. So a lot of times I'll press. I instead of like I for an inventory or E if some people have it, but yeah. And then I I came back and after having you know walked away and had my he head cleared a bit, I thought about well what about uh, torch burnout? So I stopped. So I um I went along and basically waited till I could hear the sound of a torch burnout. And if I could hear the t the torch burnout, I thought oh okay that's a torch. And if it's if I didn't, then obviously it wasn't. So that's how I ended up figuring out this puzzle. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way that that ended up turning out because it um, was actually <laughs> it turned out to be such a simple thing. I was looking for something crazy, complicated like a, a pattern or something. Cause I, when I found out that those three repeaters in the middle were um, messed up, I thought, well, maybe it's matching the previous or some something somewhere. Now this one here. Um, it was just a matter of extending and moving pistons around. So a, few, a number of one tick pulses, just um, it was really annoying because they kept butting each other. As you might be able to see looking down, you can kind of see that uh, sometimes the piston would bug or bud, uh, the piston that's being pushed that is, and would just randomly extend. Um, <laughs> because I don't know why, but it, it was annoying and. Yeah, so I started looking around at all the other things and realized, okay, there's a f couple of uh, extenders, there's a double piston extender, um, you know, trying to figure out ways that the redstone block would move, and uh, yeah, so I ended up uh, planning it out beforehand, which was good. I think it, uh, it helped out for later, because I wasn't like walking around aimlessly like, okay, now what? But I had a plan in mind from the beginning. See, like there, it butted, and it meant I had to do an extra step just to uh, to get the thing to move. 
<laughs> that was a derp there. I uh, activated the wrong piston. And so I had to reactivate it. But it was okay. So basically what I wanted to do here was um, get yeah this one here to extend to get the the top the piston at the end of this yellow line. Um, but I couldn't seem to get the thing to stay. Uh, and so that could push the piston to, that you can see to my left and ended up working. And then that could push the next one and so on and so forth. Because the idea was I wanted to move the redstone block into the other uh, channel or the other corridor. It was in the, the wrong tube. So I went and moved it backwards. Uh, sorry, forwards. And then I had used the double piston extender up here, as you can see here, to just move it up there. And then I had to retract it using these ones. Now that's obviously the longer part of the whole journey, but uh, it turned out to be relatively quick, in my opinion anyway. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't difficult, it was just uh, getting the timing right got a bit irritating at times. But, uh, or putting the thing on the right block for the piston, because you couldn't quite see through it. I really wish there was a, a solid block that was see-through, if that makes sense. Uh, in Because in, in redstone, obviously, you can't place any redstone on glass, you can't place any um, redstone, on, I mean, a place a repeater on a glass. You know, if there was a, a solid block that was made of glass, it would be awesome. Something that you could that would interact with redstone, so it would be like you could see through it, and it would conduct power. Um, yeah. So this one here was the last challenge. I was a bit confused by the fact by the idea of having three repeaters. So I thought, well, maybe there's a repeater lock idea to it. So I I kind of derped around with that and tried to find different designs for, um, I guess a, a piston lock that would work. Uh, not thinking about doing something simple as I eventually did, which was just a, a simple um, overload system. And uh, I tell you what, this one was not hard in the end, but it was annoying because I had to uh, keep rebuilding the same thing over and over. Because um, I built something, and no joke, it just kept... Uh, like, you'd get, I'd get it right to the other side, and then it would break, which you'll see one of in a minute. But it happened to me a number of times, like, where I'd I'd get right to the end, and uh, it just, <laughs> right as I'm about, to, like, one uh, width away from the end, I only needed one more piece of redstone, so I started clearing a bit for it, um, which was a formality, really. I'd already done the rest of it. Uh, when I got to that point, I lost it, and it was irritating, the most irritating thing you would ever see. I was so frustrated. <laughs> but yeah, here's me just experimenting with different types of repeater locks because I was convinced it had to be something to do with repeater locks. I don't know why. It's just what my my mind had uh, envisioned. Um, I think it was probably the only one where I initially started off with a wrong idea. Or the, actually, I might have done that off a couple of things. But probably the the furthest from what needed to be done of any of my things I did in this entire puzzle. Uh, I think I did pretty well though, considering. <laughs> um, like the uh, the command block one, I was surprised I got that one um, because that was a a real finicky one that one. <sighs> but yeah, so here's me thinking, okay, well, that's an overload, but that doesn't help much. <laughs> I was a little bit frustrated at, at, at this one because it was such a simple thing, and having looked through the thing, I realised this was the last one but I didn't know uh, how to make this thing compactly repeater lock and then able to transfer onwards. So, yeah, it was kind of frustrating. But uh, in the end, I mean, I figured it out, and I'm glad I did. It was, it was quite silly for me to, to imagine. That was me counting, by the way. Um, to imagine <laughs> that it was so simple in the end. But, yeah. Um, so here I am. I actually lost a clip there. I don't know what happened to it. I had a clip uh, in between these two. I guess it's just filler, really. But I came to figure out what I had to do, which was to overload it and then move it this way. So I, I had this nice three-wide... Uh, three-wide, what am I saying? This nice system to, to move it. And uh, it worked quite well. 
until I got right to the end. Or right there, for example, it overloaded again. <laughs> that happened to me so many times, but for the most time, for the most part, it always happened to me right as I got to the end. Right as I was, like, literally just at the end, about to celebrate my victory sort of thing. And then it would do it to me. As you'll see in a minute, I actually have one of them on on record, and then I was like, stuff it, I'm going to... I'll get back to that point, and then I'll re start recording again, which is what I do at the end. <laughs> Actually, um, I didn't speed up the portion after that, obviously, because it's the end portion. But, uh, yeah, it was quite frustrating, to say the least. <laughs> Incredibly frustrating, in fact. And, uh, I mean, like, you look how close I am. I am ridiculously close. I All right, we're at this point again. <sighs> Ridiculous. If I have to do this one more time, I swear, stuff is being broken. <laughs> Alright. Yes! Oh, yes! <laughs> All of my yes. Save you, repeater. There we go. Woo! <laughs> yes! Oh, yeah. Could not have thought a better way to end it. Woo! Thank you so much for watching, guys. I, uh, I, that last challenge, I swear. You had me good for a bit there, Seth. I kept thinking I'd do repeater locks. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, I'm Steve and I'll catch you, na nah, catch you next time. See ya. Got a little Swedish there. Yeah.